A fiddler on the roof. Sounds crazy, though. <laughs> but here, in our little village of Anatevka, you might say that every one of us is a fiddler on the roof trying to scratch out a simple, pleasant tune without breaking his neck. It isn't easy. You may ask, why do we stay up there if it's so dangerous? Well, we stay because Aratevka is our home. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition. Tradition, tradition. Tradition, tradition, tradition. Tradition. Because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many years. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. How to eat, how to sleep, how to work, even how to wear clothes. For instance, we always keep our heads covered and we wear these little prayer shawls. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? I'll tell you. I don't know, <laughs> but it's a tradition, and because of our traditions, everyone here knows who he is and what God expects him to do. Who day and night must scramble for a living, feed a wife and children, say his daily prayers, and who has the right as master of the house to have the final word at home? The Papa! The Papa, the Papa, tradition. Oh. Today I am a horse. Dear God, did you have to make my poor old horse lose his shoe just before the Sabbath? <laughs> that wasn't nice. It's enough you pick on me, have you? Bless me with five daughters, a, a life of poverty. What have you got against my horse? Sometimes, I think when things are too quiet up there, you say to yourself, let's see, what kind of mischief can I play on my old friend, Tevya? Ah, you're finally home, my breadwinner. I'll talk to you later. Where's your horse? He was invited to the blacksmiths for the Sabbath. Hurry up. The sun won't wait for you. I have something to say to you. <sighs> As the good book says, heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. In other words, send us the cure. We've got the sickness already. <sighs> ah, I'm not really complaining. After all, with your help, I'm starving to death. You made many, many poor people. I realize, of course, it's no shame to be poor, but it's no great honor either. So what would have been so terrible if I had had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, all day long I'd biddy biddy boom. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. If I were a biddy biddy rich, he idle diddle, idle diddle man, I'd build a big tall house with a rooms by the dozen right in the middle of the town. A fine tin roof with real wooden floors below. <clears throat> there could be one long staircase just going up, one even longer coming down, and one more leading nowhere just for a show. I'd fill my yard with chicks and turkeys and geese, ducks for the town to see and hear. Squawking just as noisily as they can. 
and each lap with geek, with a rock, with the geek, but the pocket would land like a trumpet on the ear, as if to say, here lives a wealthy man. If I were a rich man, yeah, be the brother, be a be be the All day long, I'd biddy biddy boom. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. Yeah, be the brother, be a be be the If I were a biddy biddy rich, he idle diddle, idle diddle man. I see my wife, my Golda, looking like a rich man's wife with a proper double chin. Supervising meals to her heart's delight. I see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock. What a happy mood she's in. Uh, screaming at the servants day and night. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. The most important men in town would come to fall on me. They would ask me to advise them, like a solemn and the wise. If you please, Reb Tevya, and pardon me, Reb Tevya. Posing problems that would cross a rabbi's eyes. Yeah, boy, 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 boy. And it won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, they think you really know. <laughs> if I were rich, I'd have the time that I lack to sit in the synagogue and pray. Maybe have a seat by the Eastern Wall. <laughs> And I'd discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. That would be the sweetest thing of all. <sighs> if I were a rich man, yeah, be the brother, be a be a be the boom. All day long I'd biddy biddy boom If I were a wealthy man I wouldn't have to work hard Yeah, be the bottom, yeah, be a biddy boom Lord who made the lion and the lamb You decreed I should be what I am Would it spoil some vast eternal plan? I were a wealthy man. Good evening, Rev Laser. How tell you? Sit down. <laughs> Have a drink. I won't insult you by saying no. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, um, how goes it with you, Tevye? How should it go? You're right. And you? The same. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so, how's your brother-in-law in America? I believe he's doing very well. He wrote you. Not lately. Then how do you know? If he were doing badly, he would write. <laughs> May I? Please. Thank you. Tevye. I suppose you know why I wanted to see you. Yes, Reb Laser, and there's no use talking about it. Huh? Why not? Why, yes. Why should I get rid of her? Well, you have a few more without her. Oh, I see. Today you want one, tomorrow you may want two. <laughs> two? What would I do with two? The same as you do with one. <laughs> Devia. This is very important to me. Oh, Laser, why is it so important? Frankly, because I'm lonesome. Lonesome? What are you talking about? You don't know. 
We're talking about my new milk cow, the one you want to buy from me. A milk cow, so I won't be lonesome. Ha! <laughs> hey, what's so funny? I was talking about your daughter, your daughter Zeitel. My daughter Zeitel? Of course, your daughter Zeitel. Oh, no. I see her in my butcher shop every Thursday. Uh, she's made a good impression on me. I, I like her. Mm. And as for me, Tevye, as you know, I'm pretty well off. I have my own house, a good store, a servant. Uh, Look, Tevye, why do we have to try to impress each other? Let's shake hands and call it a match. I'm going to have this little drink. And you won't need a dowry for her? Oh. And uh, maybe you'll find something in your own purse, too, eh? <laughs> Shame. Shame on you, my own purse. My daughter in cycle is not the sort I would sell for right. money. Shame, all right. Right, sir. All right. Shame. All right. All right. Shame. All right. All right. Oh. We won't talk about money. <laughs> the main thing is let's get it done with. And I'll be good to her, Tevya. I like her. What do you think? What do I think? What do I think? Hmm. I never liked him. Well, why should I? You can have a fine conversation with him if you're talking about kidneys and livers. Uh, but on the other hand, not everybody has to be a scholar. If you're wealthy enough, no one will call you stupid. And with a butcher, my daughter will surely never know hunger. Oh, but he has a problem. He's much older than her. Well, that's her problem. But she's younger. <laughs> that's his problem. I always thought of him as a butcher, but uh, hey, maybe I misjudged him. He's a, he's a good man. He likes her. He will try to make her happy. What do I think? It's a match. You agree? I agree. Oh, Tevye, that's wonderful. <laughs> Let's drink on it. Why not, my friend, to you? Eh? No, my friend, to you. To the both of us. To our agreement. To our agreement. To our prosperity, to good health and happiness, and most important of all, to life, to life. L'chaim, 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 to life. Here's to the father I've tried to be. Here's to my bride to be. Drink l'chaim, to life, to life, l'chaim. L'chaim, l'chaim, to life. Life has a way of confusing us, blessing and bruising us. Drink Lachaim to life. God would like us to be joyful, even though our hearts lie panting on the floor. How much more can we be joyful when there's really something to be joyful for? To life, to life, Lachaim. To Saito, my daughter, my wife. It gives you something to think about. Something to drink about. Drink Lachaim. Drive! Red Mortier!